Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Atlanta Business Radio. Brought to you by OnPay. Built in Atlanta, OnPay is the top rated payroll and HR software anywhere. Get one month free at OnPay.com. Now, here's your host. Lee Cantor here, another episode of Atlanta Business Radio, and this is going to be a good one. But before we get started, it's important to recognize our sponsor, OnPay. Without them, we could not be sharing these stories. Today on Atlanta Business Radio, we have Jackie Canizo, and she's with C5 Georgia Youth Foundation. Welcome, Jackie. Hey, Lee. Thanks for for having me. Good to be here. Well, I'm excited to learn more about what you're up to. Tell us about C5. uh, How are you serving folks? Sure. So um, I'm the executive director of C5 Georgia Youth Foundation, and we work with high potential under uh, high potential teens from under resourced communities in Metro Atlanta. And we have a five year youth development program that um, focuses on leadership, challenge readiness, college and career prep and community action. And we have about 225 students in the program today, and we're hoping to uh, have more. Now, how does a student kind of um, make themselves eligible for that? Who decides who's a high potential? Sure. So we have partner schools in the metro. Um, We start at the end of seventh grade with, um, as you mentioned, high potential youth, and they're recommended to us by some teachers and guidance counselors, and they're generally students that have a B average or better, and they show some type of leadership qualities as well as the motivation to succeed. And so we have, you usually per every, actually we're right in the process right now of of selecting the class of 2026, if you can imagine that, but uh, (laughs) we usually have about 150 applicants per, per year. And out of that, we choose Depending on funding, we can choose anywhere from up to 72 students that that calendar year. And then if a student is chosen, what's the experience like for them? Well, it's uh, it's quite a rigorous program and it is a commitment. As I mentioned earlier, it is a five year program. And so the students um, each year has a theme. And as I mentioned, the leadership part of it is the first year the students learn to lead themselves. And that starts with a 30-day unplugged experience uh, in the North Georgia Mountains at camp. Now, of course, in 2020, we did we did everything virtually, and we are hopeful that we'll be able to do that this year in person. But that is the start of the program where they go to this residential camp, and that's where they start their leadership journey. And then <clears throat> after that, year two. They learn to lead themselves. They also go up back up to the camp. And as I mentioned, it's North Georgia mountains and they learn to lead others. And so each of the first two years, there's corresponding leadership curriculum throughout the school year. And then year three is actually the challenge ready component of our program where the students are sent to a backcountry hike in the Grand Tetons. And that is one of the most challenging yet life uh, altering experiences for these young people. And then years four and five are really the heavy concentration on the college and career uh, readiness part of our program. And then within all the five years, the students are required to do about 50 hours of community service uh, per, per calendar year. Now, have you seen kind of the fruits of your labor in terms of having kids graduate and then have kind of uh, careers where the leadership was actually evident in their behavior after they went through the program? Actually, we do. We, um, we have uh, several alums. So we, so after the five years, which it does, you know, correspond with their, you know, through high school. And then of course the goal being to head off to college. But uh, so we've graduated the first class in 2010. And so now those young folks are out of college and now, you know, started their career. So we have several that are in leadership positions at Truist. Um, I just spoke with one one of our students from class of 2010, who is actually does leadership curriculum for Blue Cross Blue Shield. Um, We have a young man who is 
in the uh, political arena um, and doing, you know, work in that space. And, you know, the list goes on and we've been very fortunate, um, as I mentioned, with these students doing really well, not just in our program throughout college and then, you know, jumping into their career. So I think it works, Lee. I think it works. <laughs> so now how did the idea come about? What was the genesis of the organization? Uh, the, the program was originally started by the uh, former CEO of Coca-Cola Enterprises, John Alm. And he started it about 20 years ago, actually in Los Angeles, when he saw, you know, a lot of teens who were, um, you know, in, in, in impoverished areas in LA and he had a ranch in Wyoming. And so he started to this, he went to the company and he said, I'd like to do some type of a camp program for these young people that, you know, that really need, need it. What I always say is a, is a hand up. Right. So, so he started with that. And then he again, went to the Coca-Cola company and said, I'd love to invest some of my own money as well as (laughs) hopefully your money to create a curriculum and and really make it the the gold standard of youth development. So that's how the history started. It was really it was that camp experience, and then they built the curriculum out um, to as it, as we know it today, which is the five year curriculum. So Coca Cola endowed it, built it, endowed it, and then about seven six seven years ago, set us on our own. So we have um, we do get a little bit of support from Coca Cola, but not like the original days. So. Now, um, so is the curriculum similar in the sense today where it's an outdoorsy kind of you're in nature kind of experience that you think is the secret sauce that helps these kids kind of maybe escape their traditional life and see a different kind of life? It is. It it really is. A, it really does use the experiential learning opportunity with the outdoors with, as you mentioned, outdoor activities. Um, Hiking is a big part of the program, as well as this camp component and then other activities. Um, we do, you know, even in, in Metro Atlanta, we do, you know, we, we volunteer with Trees Atlanta to some other outdoor activities. So there really is a bond with the nature, if you will, in the outdoors. And, and again, a lot of these kids, when they go up to the North Georgia mountain or, you know, certainly out to Wyoming, not only have they not been out of the metro, certainly not out of the <laughs> out of state. So it's it's quite uh, it's quite an experience for them. Now let's talk a little bit about the Chick Fil A uh, True Inspiration Award. How did that come about? So, um, and one of our students, uh, class of twenty twenty, Brandon Wilson, uh, was working, and actually he's the um, he was in a leadership position at Chick-fil-A and Fairburn for a owner operator named Mike Moore. And when the true inspiration nominees kind of popped up, I, you know, mentioned it to, to Brandon and he brought it to Mike and Mike, you know, was so impressed with Brandon that he said, absolutely, we will nominate you for this award. And this year, you know, for 2021, Chick-fil-A really invested heavily in, organizations that support especially the black community in Atlanta so you know unbeknownst to us this this award (laughs) was really um you know had a a pretty large endowment if you will and so that's really how it started we got the not we got the nod that we were nominated and then we had to apply it was a very rigorous grant application and we you know wrote the grant and then um, we became a finalist. And then in November, it actually went out to the public. So we were informed that we were a finalist for the award and then um, people could vote for us. So between you know the middle of November to the beginning of December, uh, Chick-fil-A and ourselves, of course, were out there promoting uh, people to vote for us. And then mid-December, they called me and said, <laughs> actually, Mike and I met in person and uh, for socially distance, of course. And he presented me with a check and I was, um, let's just say a little for clumped, a little overwhelmed by it. So, <laughs> And that was, um, that was a nice uh, kind of chunk of change there that can make it, <laughs> it can help a lot of kids, right? Correct. So it, it's really what I consider to be a, a huge investment in the C5 program. And we had already started to, 
put um, some of the thoughts around what we would do if we had got, of course, not knowing what we would end up with, it could have been 50,000, 100, which would have been fantastic as well. Um, but we started to put our heads around, you know, what can we do to get, you know, to, to work with other middle schools in the metro. And then also part of it was for us to work with our alumni. You know, we realized we have this opportunity to support them as well. And, you know, there's a lot of companies that would love to have a, a young person working for them that has leadership qualities, right? So, you know, just that's going to help us develop some of those partnerships as well. So, And then, so this is the primary focus of C5 Georgia is for these kids, but there's other projects you're working on as well? Um, well, most, it's all, you know, it is all about young people. And I guess, you know, as I mentioned, the, you know, our, pro, our, our initial, our core programming is the teens, which range from seven to graduate, uh, excuse me, high school. And then, as I said, we're just, you know, looking to develop some networking opportunities as well as internship opportunities for the, the alumni of C5. So that's, that keeps us busy, Lee. That's a lot. <laughs> I'm sure. And it's probably, you know, every day, 365 days a year, uh, you're working on the program, whether they're with you or if you're planning the next cohort. Yeah. As I mentioned, we, um, we've taken applications for the class of 2026 and we are in the process of, we have volunteers review the applications and then we actually have volunteers who interview the students. And then we, as a staff make the final decisions to, you know, what students need the program the most. Um, we do, you know, part of our selection process includes mostly students who are first generation to go to college uh, mostly financially dis disadvantaged, but also kids that, you know, are that kind of the silent middle where the kids that don't necessarily always get the attention, but really need the most help. And so we are in the process of doing that. So now how can we help you? What do you need more of right now? Do you need more kind of businesses stepping up and kind of uh, contributing financially or volunteering maybe to help in the leadership uh, program? Mm -hmm. Or do you have that part kind of baked with your own staff? Um, honestly, we do a lot of programming around career exploration with companies, and that is definitely something since I took um, took over in 2018, 20, late 2017, to really develop more opportunities for these kids to see themselves, you know, in business leaders and whatever that looks like, right? So always looking to partner with more companies for the, you know, for the opportunity to introduce careers to these young people. Um, always looking for volunteers. We have a golf event that we will do in May. So we would love to have some folks participate in that. We did not do it in 20, 2020, but we are cautiously optimistic to do a socially distance event in, in the month of May. And um, I think you have to, you know, and I think in order to, to continue to give young people an opportunity, we have to cast the widest net as possible, right? So um, we've been very fortunate with the Chick-fil-A, as I mentioned, investment, but that is going to get us to the next level. And the next level is to help more kids and to really help change some of the uh, inequities in our community. Now, if somebody wanted to learn more, have a more substantive conversation with you or somebody on your team, what's the website? Uh, C5. Georgia spelled out dot org. And we just actually updated our website recently. So it's got a nice fresh look to it. And my contact information is there as well as some other staff. And I'd love to talk to anybody that would love to help young people succeed. And as I said, bridge the gap to, uh, to success. And that's the letter C the number five Georgia spelled out dot org. Correct. Yes. Sorry. I should say that. <laughs> Well, Jackie, thank you so much for sharing your story today. You're doing important work and we appreciate you. Thank you, Lee. Uh, thanks for having us. All right. This is Lee Cantor. We'll see you next time on Atlanta Business Radio. And remember, this work could not be done without our sponsor, OnPay. Please support them so we can continue to share these important stories. Today's episode of Atlanta Business Radio is brought to you by OnPay. Built in Atlanta, OnPay is the top-rated payroll and HR software anywhere. Get one month free at onpay.com.